Good afternoon and welcome at the conference call of the Dutch Green Business Group, DGB Group. My name is Selen Duistijn and today during this conference call I will go over our achievements and accomplishments of the year 2021 as we presented them in the recently published annual report 2021. I will also go over where we stand today as a company. I will present to you our project pipeline and go over them in detail with you as well. And also take a look into the future as I will discuss the outlook of DGB Group in detail. We have received several questions before the start of the conference call. Um, I've went over them and I will answer them in depth here today as well. And of course, it's also possible to send in your questions live during the call. Um, please don't hesitate to ask. This is where the conference call is for. So send in your questions and we will go over them. And you can do that as follows. Our goal is to make nature flourish and prosper. DGB is a project developer focused on high quality, large scale carbon and biodiversity projects. That's what we do. We're a project developer. We focus on afforestation, reforestation and nature conservation. And with these large scale projects that we develop all over the world, we originate carbon credits and biodiversity credits. And carbon credits and biodiversity credits, of course, are being used by small, medium-sized enterprises, large corporations, and even governments to achieve net zero. So that's our focus. Through nature restoration and ecosystem restoration and these large-scale projects, we help companies achieve net zero. And our focus is always on nature and biodiversity. The past year for DGB was all about setting up and establishing its first projects. DGB started eight different projects in the year 2021. We now have a project pipeline of over 20 million tons of CO2 reduction, which we can sell through our distribution network to small and medium sized enterprises and larger corporations. We've even sold already 150,000 tons of carbon reduction already. Through our projects, over 3.4 million trees have been planted so far. And DGB's mission is fully aligned with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Already, we're looking for new opportunities while establishing and expanding our current project pipeline. We have over 200,000 hectares of sourced lands that are in desperate need for nature conservation projects. That's our focus for the future. But for now, this is what we've established which I'm immensely proud of. The first milestone we achieved was the acquiring of Statics Artificial Intelligence, a software development company that will develop in-house green tech solutions to speed up ecosystem restoration. Later in the year, we took a strategic stake in the retail platform Corkis, which will help us expand our distribution channel and focus on retail investors that are looking for green and profitable investments. Also, of course, the expansion of our project pipeline. The year started with a carbon finance in a project afforestation in Sierra Leone, which we later in the year could already sell. We developed and matured towards Paraguay, where we helped prevent deforestation in the Gran Chaco, the second largest forest of Latin America. We focused on Africa, with the development and the establishment of our first project in Kenya, which later expanded into two different projects, one focused on the afforestation and another one in the distribution of energy efficient cookstoves. We copied our project design and took that to Cameroon, where we can create an even larger impact. We're now scaling up our, our reforestation project in Cameroon, as well as the distribution and manufacturing of the energy efficient cookstoves. Later in the year, DGB focused on the expansion of its distribution network. We signed several collaboration agreements and are setting up several joint ventures to expand our distribution network for both carbon as well as biodiversity credits. The most recent, recent project that we added to our pipeline is in Uganda, where we're helping an existing beautiful project 
expand and safeguard the impact, the positive impact that it's creating on the beautiful environment of Uganda. So currently DGB is in an exciting position with a very promising and well diversified project portfolio of nature-based solutions that will help us originate both carbon and biodiversity credits. Currently we see a worldwide trend that supply cannot keep up with demand. The carbon markets are growing fast. We've also seen that in the prices of the last three years. The price of carbon reduction is a commodity and has been rising over 200% in the last three years, 270% to be exact. So we're in the right space. Therefore, we're, DGB is also growing. We're expanding our team. We're always looking for the right talent, but our headcount has doubled in the last month alone. Also, we see a lot of new players entering this promising sector. We've seen a lot of different cryptocurrencies backed by nature-based solutions and carbon, carbon reduction that are entering the market, buying up a large amount of carbon credits. Also, asset managers and hedge funds, hedge funds are playing into further rise of the carbon credit prices. It's a very promising sector and I'm very excited to be in this space. Global megatrends drive the demand for carbon credits and underpin our growth opportunities. DGB Group currently has a project pipeline of over 20 million tons of carbon reduction credits. And I'm excited for our outlook and our future in which we expand existing projects that we've established in the last years and therefore will originate and develop even more carbon credits. Because the current projects are set up in a way that we don't need to look for new opportunities elsewhere, our focus in the near future is to expand our existing projects and therefore originate even more carbon credits. Also in the near future, we're aiming to launch our groundbreaking Habitat market platform. After the acquiring of Statics Artificial Intelligence, the software development team has been working behind the scenes on this biodiversity credit platform. When we launch in the next three to six months, this platform will be the first platform worldwide to developers who can develop a biodiversity project, buyers who are looking to buy biodiversity credits and sellers to offer and trade existing credits. I'm very excited by the launch as this will complement our existing uh, uh, sales and distribution network of carbon credits with biodiversity credits. We have received a lot of questions before the start of this conference call as well as during. Most of the questions have been answered and I will go over a selection of the questions now. All of your questions will be answered by email as well. So if you have not received an answer yet, you will by email. The first question is from a Dutch investor, Mr. Jongstra, and he asks about our business model and how future proof it really is. So to answer that question, let's take a look at the business model first. DGB is a green project developer of nature-based solutions and our projects originate carbon credits and biodiversity credits which we sell to small and medium-sized enterprises, corporations and governments. That's our business model and that's our strong focus as a project developer. The growth opportunities in this sector are immense as there are an increasing amount of net zero pledges and more and more companies aim for net zero and carbon neutrality. Even governments are only just beginning um, in aiming for net zero. There are a lot of different trends underpinning our opportunities, which we've went over in detail in our annual report. 
But to answer your question and really summarize it, is that the trend towards carbon uh, uh, neutral will be there for minimally 2030, but there are in a lot of reports already goals set for 2050. A lot of the Western countries, as well as the development countries, have set goals for 2030 first and then 2050. So our business model is very future-proof as carbon credits are here to stay and play an important role in opening up carbon reduction models and will definitely help in achieving net zero. We have received a second question from a Dutch investor. Uh, Mr. Veldman asks about the opportunities for farming, for agriculture and carbon credits. And is this a focus for DGB? And that's a very good question because in the sector of carbon credits and biodiversity credits, there are different types. Reforestation is different than afforestation, is different than nature conservation. And in these nature-based solutions and with these different types of carbon credits and biodiversity credits, agriculture also has its role. Within the carbon credit scheme, there is a big role for agriculture as it incentivizes farmers to have less impactful measures for their land and agriculture practices and they get rewarded with carbon or biodiversity credits. To give you an example, if a agriculture firm uses less invasive techniques in its land management practices, they will receive carbon credits to compensate for that. And for now, this is not a sector DGB focuses on as we're focused on nature. Uh, but we see for the future, definitely as this market opens up further, uh, a big role for DGB as uh, it is a big and important market. The third question is from Mr. Van Soest, who asks several different questions and seems like quite the uh, specialist on ecology as he asked the question, are you planting random types of trees in random places? Uh, to summarize his question. Uh, and the answer is, of course not. We have a team of foresters, ecologists and nature conservation biologists to make sure that we plant the right species, the right tree species, in the right places to fit the natural habitats. But I can fully understand the reason for this question as in my presentations and on our website you will see a lot DGB plants a million trees. We have planted 3.4 million trees is something I even said in the beginning of this presentation. Um, of course I don't have the time then to go into full detail which trees we're planting where but I can assure you that in detail, in our procedures, in our processes, in, the, in our underground uh, uh, operations, we have a very well thought through project design to make sure that we're planting the right tree in the right spot. And to summarize, sometimes we say we plant a million trees. In reality, we're planting 200 different tree species, minimally per project. So to answer your question, um, we have a, a very good team of specialists to make sure we plant the right tree in the right spot. We received a question from an English investor, Mr. McGregor, who asks, how can you guarantee the delivery of offsets over the project lifetime of 30 years? And that's a very good question because the minimum lifetime of a project of nature-based solutions in our project pipeline is 30 years. We start the project for a minimum lifetime of 30 years. So that's a long time and therefore um, I fully understand the question. Um, and to answer that best is to tell you a bit more about our extensive feasibility study as well as due diligence phase. Because before we start a project, a minimum time amount of six months, most of the time it's nine months of extensive feasibility study and due diligence has been done. We check for underground capacity, we check the land chain tenure, we check for the impact on the local communities and their willingness to work with us. We check for local project implementers who can help us realize the project. And I mentioned the willingness of the communities, but also from the government who plays a big role in these large scale projects. 
because we're building something for the next 30 years. We give estimations. After the feasibility study and after due diligence, we have a pretty good idea, a very good idea actually, on the amount of carbon credits that can be originated. We know exactly what we're going to plant or what nature we're going to conserve and how long we need for that. But as in any construction project, there can be delays, there can be um, uh, misses in our estimation, of course. So in our projections, we're always very conservative. We always take the lower bound of our estimations. So when we speak about 20 million tons of offsets, um, that's always the more conservative and the lower band of our estimation. And of course, something can happen. Uh, something can happen for the positive. If there's a heavy rain season, that will be very good for the, our production because the trees grow a lot faster. Um, but of course, there can be a period of drought. There can be heavy winds and all sorts of environmental impact as well as governmental impact. Geopolitical um, uh, changes play a big role in this project for over the long term. The change of a president can have an impact on the project, of course. But we take these risks into account and try to mitigate where possible and try to take them into account of our estimations also where needed. So if you hear me talk and if you see DGB's projections of a pipeline of 20 million tons of CO2, that's already on the conservative side and that's taking into account the different risk factors that we also address in our annual report 2021 and go over in more detail. Um, this is what we feel comfortable with, this is what our experts feel comfortable with because this is what we can deliver. The following question is from Mrs. Williams, who wants to know how to determine the price of carbon and why should you not just buy the cheapest carbon credit when offsetting your emissions? And that's a very good question that our team at DGB get asked a lot. How do I determine the price of carbon? Even a quick Google search will result in prices as low as 1 euro and as high as 200 euros. So it is a very correct question. And the answer is to look for the underlying project. Um, it all has to do with the underlying project. A ton of carbon is the metric unit to put a value on nature. And the bigger the positive impact on nature, the higher the price of the credit. To give you a good example, in, if we're protecting an existing natural habitat, we're protecting it from illegal logging. That's what we're doing. The average price would be around nine euros. If we're also protecting an endangered animal, that takes more work, more effort, and therefore the price will be higher. If we're not just protecting nature and conserving nature, but also restoring, we need to actively set up nurseries. We need to hire people, skilled workers, to restore nature and plant trees. Therefore, an average afforestation project will be around 17 to 18 euros. If we're speaking about blue carbon, the restoration of coral reefs and mangroves, the price can be as high as 65 euros. And at DGB, we focus on the high quality projects, which add a lot of other uh, co-benefits other than restoring nature. We focus on the local community, wildlife, and nature, and reducing emissions. And therefore, we focus on the high quality uh, uh, credits which have an average price of 11 euros but it's not unusual for us to sell our credits for over 20 euros in smaller amounts because of the high quality. And to answer the second part of the question why should you not just go for the cheapest credits? Um, and the answer lies in the fact is how much impact do you want to have? What do you want to do? Are you just going for the carbon neutral stamp? Do you want to achieve net zero in the cheapest possible way? or do you really want to create a positive impact? And there's the answer. Do you really want to create a positive impact? Look for the high quality carbon credits. If you just want to go carbon neutral, then you will most likely go for the cheapest one, but you won't find them at G DGB because we focus on high quality, large scale projects that actually create a positive impact on the environment. The 
following question is from Mr. Taleb from the UAE. He would like to know how do you verify the carbon credits? And again, that's a very good question that we get asked a lot and I'm more than happy to answer uh, because that's something we're very proud of. Um, it's one thing to plant a tree to restore nature. It's another thing to create large scale verified carbon projects. It takes a long time and there's a lot of effort in validating what the project is producing or the CO2 that it's removing and verifying that. Uh, we work with the leading standard of the world, the verified carbon standard, uh, which allows us to sell VCS carbon credits. Um, we can construct a project in the best possible way, uh, but it will not allow us to sell carbon credits if they are not verified. So we work with the global standard of VCS for our nature-based solutions. We work with gold standard, which is the leading standard for uh, carbon project verification for our energy efficient cookstove projects, which is again the leading standard for this type of project. And to tell you a bit more about how this verification works is that after the project has been realized, so when we're planting a tree in year one, we need to wait five years for the trees to have grown, have matured. By that time, we have submitted our project design document, which is a 200 page document fully detailing all the ecological and environmental impacts the project will have and a very detailed explanation and calculation of the carbon mitigation and removal that is existing because of this project. And in year five, a team will perform an audit on the ground to check if our project design matches what has happened in reality. If that does matches and they can verify the actual impact, that will lead to the issuance of the carbon credits, which will allow us to trade the actual carbon credits. So I always say everyone can plant a tree, but it's a different, uh, uh, a whole different world to be a project developer of nature-based solutions because only that with the right procedures and following the right uh, uh, steps will allow you to speak of verified carbon credits. So there's a, a big audit process involved in order for us to sell our carbon credits. The last question of this conference call is from Mr. Wong, who asked the following question. If I would become a long-term investor, in what ways could I be involved in the actual project and how can I be engaged? And I absolutely love that question because I always encourage our investors to be as engaged as possible, both with DGB as a company and helping it grow, as well as with realizing our mission, our goals and pursuing the same purpose for restoring ecosystems worldwide and helping nature flourish and prosper. So we really look forward to all investors welcoming them on board, joining our mission and aligning on the same purpose. And with that, I would like to conclude this conference call and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you very much for your time and your questions. If you do feel like a question is unanswered, please do send us an email at the form below or at info at dgb.earth. Our team is ready to answer all your questions and we're happy to help. Um, looking forward to speaking with you and presenting to you next time. And for now, have a good day.